Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Jean Meunier. Uh, I'm a software engineer since uh, 1999, and I'm mainly involved in, uh, in the Linfone project since 2010. So, in a few words, uh, the Linfone project is a voice over IP soft phone uh, developed uh, for Linux in, uh, in very early 2000. So what I'm going to talking about is how to use the voice over IP technology to build uh, um, uh, an intercom system for, uh, for, uh, for door entry. Okay, so the, the presentation will first start to, to introduce the use case, so what it is about when you want to, to build this kind of system. Uh, what is the voice over IP technology that we suggest to use and uh, how to build a very simple uh, voice over IP network using a uh, Raspberry Pi as an example and uh, with the Linfo software and uh, what would be the, the next things. Okay, so the simple use case is, is like this. So you have an intercom a doorbell uh, in front of your building and you want to someone to, to open, um, to open uh, the door. So in the past, so the, the very simple solution is to have a camera in, in the front of, uh, of the building and to use a, a simple uh, coax cable to, to link the camera to, um, to the home screen. Okay. So it's pretty cool, but now if you want to have multiple display at, uh, at home, like the home screen, but also why not a mobile device or a, a PC? So we start to be in the multi-display use case. Okay, so same thing, I have the coax, but what if I want to, to bring the video to my uh, mobile device, uh, for instance? So it's become much more complex. And what we can also imagine that the same kind of use case, so you want the video to be displayed at home, but also uh, in the street uh, on your mobile device if you want to know if something is, uh, ring, is uh, happening in front of, uh, of your home. So the good thing is that we can leverage on digital infrastructure to do this kind of thing. So no, no more analogic um, audio or video, but we can use HiP to uh, carry audio and video packets from the, uh, the door entry panel to the home screen or even a mobile device or even a mo mobile device connected to the public internet. And when it's about HiP, voice over IP, is a good idea. Uh, and especially two protocols, which are SIP, SIP, and uh, RTP, for real-time uh, transport protocol. Okay. So, voice over IP technology that I'm going to, to use for this um, presentation are based on two main IETF standards. The first one is SIP, Session Initiation Protocol, and the second one is real-time transport protocol. So SIP, well, in a few words, it's a text-based protocol that is inspired from HTTP, standardized in 2000. There are two main components in a SIP network, the SIP user agent and SIP proxy, which are which are about uh, writing SIP uh, messages between uh, different clients. And uh, RTP in short, basically the idea is to um, uh, send uh, uh, audio and video in a packetized, packetized way over internet. Okay, so now we want to use IP, we will use SIP, and RTP, so what we need is a SIP user agent located in a door entry camera and a SIP user agent uh, in the home screen. 
for the software. For the hardware, uh, at the door entry camera level, what we need is to be able to capture audio, video, and for the home screen, we need just to be able to display video and uh, capture the audio, because most of the time there is no screen in the, in the front door. So, for the software, what we need is, uh, what we propose is to use VinPhone, uh, which is a SIP uh, user agent uh, with RTP capabilities. And for the home screen, so we can do uh, exactly the same. Okay, so now we have the hardware, can be a Raspberry Pi or any uh, any uh, small hardware uh, running ARM or any other uh, processor, a display, uh, uh, a cable, and on the software base, we can use uh, the Raspbian uh, distribution of the Raspberry Pi with Linux, with Linfone on both parties. Okay, so at the door entry camera level, what uh, we can use is a command line, is Linfone daemon, daemon, which is a command line interface uh, for being able to place or receive call with early media feature. Uh, I'm going to explain what, what it is about. So early media is a specific way of uh, initiating calls. So for a regular call, uh, you wait for the call to be established before uh, exchanging media between uh, the two endpoints. In the case of early media, uh, the idea is to be able to send the video before answering the call. Because when someone uh, is in front of the door, you want to be able to see his video. It's a kind of preview, but not uh, necessarily uh, accepting the call. So Linfone Daemon, it's an open source project derivated from Linfone. It's available on, uh, uh, on our public uh, Git uh, repository. And also something interesting for the embedded case, uh, we provide some uh, Yocto receipt to, um, to integrate uh, Linfone Daemon within a Yocto distribution. Okay, so how it will work? Just a button connected to the GPIO. I just start in front demon uh, in the background uh, with a Unix pipe. And with a couple of lines of Python, it's pretty easy to handle the, um, the, the, the button and just to open socket um, communicating with the Linfone demon and to initiate a call. That's it. On the display, on the display side, it's almost the same. You can just start Linfone Demon in uh, auto answer mode, and it will automatically display the, the the video. So it's for the very simple use case. So now, if you want something a little bit more complex, you want to be able to distribute the video not only to the home screen, but to the home screen and to another equipment, which can, which can be, uh, for instance, uh, to um, a mobile application. You need to add another equipment in the SIP world, which is the SIP proxy. The, um, the, the purpose of the SIP proxy will be to route the call on both the CPU user agent, which is in the home screen, and on uh, another uh, uh, user agent, which can be uh, a mobile application, for instance. <coughs> so now we we suggest to use another equipment, which is uh, which is called FlexiSIP uh, SIP proxy. As I said in, in the beginning, it's the matter of a SIP proxy is to route the, the calls. And 
with a special feature, which is the early media call for hacking. Because as I said uh, at the beginning of the presentation, what we would like is to have the video uh, coming from the door entry system to the home screen or to the uh, mobile application before establishment of the call. So we need a, a C proxy which is able to, uh, to duplicate the audio stream in order to be displayed on both uh, devices. It's, the, it's what is called the early media call forking, sending video previous packet from the call initiator to all ringing devices. Okay, so FlexiSIP, it, it's a simple uh, uh, process running on Linux with a very small configuration file, so just a couple of sections to authenticate. Uh, I need to, um, to set the domain of my, uh, my house and a small uh, configuration file uh, with, the, um, with the password in order to authenticate the, the user. Uh, if we want to go in deep into the, the C protocol, so I have the smartphone and app which was registered to the home screen, the, uh, to the uh, home screen C proxy, the home screen panel which was registered as well, and when the door entry camera uh, want to invite call, the invite goes to the C proxy which fork the invite to both the smartphone application and to the home screen and the RTP with the video can be displayed on both devices at the same time. Okay, so now if we go a little bit in deep in, in the, the complexity, I want the, the video of my door entry system to be seen on my own, but also if I'm outside, it would be cool if I could be able to see who is um, pressing the, the button in front of my house. So now what we need is to cascade two C proxy, one at home and another which can be uh, located anywhere on, on internet. So we can do, we can do it with uh, FlexiSIP uh, the same way. So we had um, a small configuration um, uh, file which explain which which state uh, where to fork the call uh, on the public internet. So as you can see, we have um, a first um, SIP address, which is everyone at my house, which is forked to home screen and to bob at sip.linfon.org, which is uh, an IP address available from the public internet. Okay, so more or less it's the same. Just the end is different. The C proxy from the from the home screen is forwarding um, the invite to the public internet C proxy, and at the end the video is uh, can be seen on the local network and on the device connected to the public internet. Security consideration. So. It's very sensitive data, which is um, um, coming from, from your apartment and from the doorbell. So make sure to use CTLS and SRTP everywhere to, to secure the communication. And also, if you put uh, some password uh, in, the, in, the, in the local network, it's, it's still better to, to hash uh, the, the password. Okay, so it was for the, for the, the presentation of, uh, of uh, the VWP network for the uh, video intercom system. What next? We, we can also imagine to do the opposite. I mean to call the door entry panel from a smartphone. It's also something which can be doable. It's also possible to to add action to the to the um, to the to the system, I mean, if you want to be able to open the door, 
you can, as an example, use DTMF to uh, to pilot uh, some uh, some switch at the door entry uh, panel level. Uh, an interesting thing that that you can also use is MDNS to be able to automatically discover uh, the door entry panel or the home screen without having to uh, configure IP addresses. Another interesting topic that uh, that we could uh, discuss is how to in to um, to use push notification to be able to. Uh, wake up mobile application when someone is pressing the home entry button. This is something which also is uh, available from uh, from the FlexSIP um, SIP proxy. Another interesting point is interworking with existing uh, the entry camera. I'm pretty sure that on your building uh, there is a uh, a door entry panel, and what we what we experience is that most of them are using SIP as the as the the protocol to to bring the audio and video from the door entry panel to uh, an equipment in the house. So, if you want to be able to to use existing equipment and just to um, to uh, to change the display, it's something which is uh, which is possible as they follow the, the SIP standard. And the uh, last thing is uh, in my uh, presentation, I um, introduced Linfundimon, which is a command line tool, but if you want to have deep, deep control of the application, you can use the library version of Linfundimon to do the same. It's available on C, C++, and on many um, other languages, even uh, on Python. Okay, thank you. I think I'm three minutes ahead. So if you have questions. Yes? Okay, any questions? Ah, yes, okay. Uh, thank, you. thank you for the presentation. So, is that a commercial project or is that your personal hobby project? Ah, uh, in fact, uh, there is no real project for this kind of, uh, of application yet. Uh, I would say that uh, I'm part of the Linfon team, and uh, there is a company backing the, the Linfon project, which propose this kind of, uh, of service. Uh, but there is no currently uh, there is no project dedicated to uh, this kind of application. It's more it's, it's more uh, a usage of Linfon and FlexiSIP for this kind of. of uh, application than a real project dedicated to, um, to the entry system. Was it your question? Uh, the question was really like you, you were talking about having your proxy and then SIP on, on the stationary you know, tablet to, mm -hmm. to display the incoming call. So would you put proxy on the same uh, tablet as? Oh, the, the proxy which is uh, in the home? Yeah. Yes. Uh, the idea is to, to use the same hardware for uh, both the home screen and the, the SIP proxy. Okay. So let's say you're streaming the um, video to proxy and then it goes to the tablet itself and mobile phone. Mm -hmm. how, how, you, how do you deal with uh, video decoding? Is that uh, hardware supported on both phones and tablet, or you uh, can proxy do recording, or how do you do this? Video decoding? Uh, vi video decoding, is it done on software, is it hardware mm. decoding? Uh, the, the proxy is not uh, decoding the video at all. It's a, 
It's uh, the same RTP stream which is forked to uh, both the home screen and to the mobile application. And the mobile application is supposed to be able to decode either H.264 or VP8, depending on the, on the protocol which is used. Most of the time, it's H.264 because it's possible to leverage on the hardware um, implementation of this kind of, of uh, codec, uh, which is available either on Raspberry Pi or on many other embedded uh, hardware. Okay, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. So how, this, how is uh, Linfone uh, compared to other uh, VoIP uh, soft, softwares like uh, Zivo and uh, Elastix? Um, <coughs> the question is, is there any... Zivo. Uh, oh, Zivo, okay. Zivo, yes. It's an open source project around Asterix. Yes. I would say that uh, we have no experience in this kind of scenario with uh, Zivo, but Linfone uh, works with Zivo uh, uh, for regular phone calls. So as uh, Zivo is based on Asterix and Asterix is following the same protocol, I don't see any, any kind of issue to use uh, Zivo uh, with this kind of... Uh, uh, deployment of Linfone within the doorbell. On the type of hardware that you've been talking about here, what sort of latency do you get between somebody actually pressing the doorbell and a mobile phone getting an image, and then what's the quality of communication between the two ends like in terms of delay between one speaking and the other hearing? Oh, if you are, I would say it's a, it's a matter of uh, network quality. So if the, the quality is good, uh, if, it's, if it's a wire cable, if it's ca cable, uh, there, is, there is almost no delay. Uh, uh, you have the encoding time at the, um, the doorbell, the doorbell um, level, but if it's hardware encoding, uh, it's, it's queued, and uh, it's a ping time, more, more or less. There, there is no, uh, I would say, 50, 50 milliseconds, 100 at, at maximum, but not, not more on the local. If you are speaking about the, the public internet, it's a little, little bit more complex. But on local network, there is no, lat no, no problematical latency. Thank you for the presentation. My question is, uh, I use a voice over IP product like a service from a service provider mm -hmm. for a few years ago, and I have it always connected in my Zoiper or something. Have you considered giving the doorbell, for example, a connectivity directly to the internet or through some proxy with some general voice over IP telephone number so that I will only set the telephone numbers of me and my family members and it will act as a standard voice over IP video call in their mobile clients? Why not? Why not? I, I don't see any uh, issue with that. Uh, as, I, as I said, uh, it's uh, standard SIP. So if, uh, if, you, if your uh, network provider, your SIP network provider uh, follow the standard, you can, uh, you can simply uh, configure the, the SIP address that you have and directly uh, connect the, the doorbell to, um, to your uh, public. Uh, so if the provider keeps all the standards and supports DTMF, everything would be possible using a standard client. Mm. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is all the time we have now, so thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>